vintage scene, one that belongs to the 1920s and 1930s. It looks like the start of the usual sedate vintage car rally, but these cars are heading for roads that normally would horrify most vintage car owners. They're off on a modern marathon run from Cairns in North Queensland to the very tip of Cape York, a distance of 1,000 kilometres. The road is sealed from Cairns to Mareeba, but from there on, it's so rugged that motorists are advised to use only four-wheel drive vehicles. The 12 cars that set out on the journey were from the Gladstone Vintage and Classic Carriage Club. Their owners wanted to show that their cars were still capable of coping with some of the worst roads in the world, even though it's more than 50 years since most of them came off the showroom floor. The first challenge was a modest one, a climb over the Great Dividing Range. The first stopover was at the Laura River, and at the end of the first day's motoring, the drivers and their passengers had a new appreciation of shock absorbers. Not many of the vintage cars were equipped with them, and after 300 kilometres of constant jolting, most bodies were feeling the strain. Running repairs were necessary all round. Somewhere on the Rally leader Andre Dorr sensed that morale had sunk during the first gruelling day. Nobody had realised just how rough the track would be. Next morning, he called a meeting and tried to inject some enthusiasm into the weary drivers, but six of them decided to turn back. With a four-wheel drive truck and wide-bodied trailer as escort, the others decided to push on northwards. The trailer was to prove indispensable in the following days, and it saved several vehicles from damage. On this occasion, a 1928 Dodge Tourer was given a dry run across a creek. It was the dry season, but that didn't remove all the water hazards. The Dalhunty River was the challenge that some of the old cars took head on. Bill Turner put his 1930 A model Ford utility to the test and made it across without help. To make the going a little smoother for some of the older vehicles, the backup crews went to work on really bad sections. Even so, this 1928 Dodge Tourer needed manpower as well as horsepower to make the grade. Cape York Peninsula is sparsely populated and there are few settlements of substance. A regular stopover on the road to the top of Australia is Musgrave Station, an historic property and the site of a telegraph station. The owners of Musgrave provided the vintage car travellers with facilities for more repairs. Two cars were now out of action with broken mainsprings. While repairs were carried out, the weary travellers relaxed and pondered on the wisdom of continuing. They weren't halfway yet, and the reported hazards ahead were daunting. Eventually, they got back on the road, but it wasn't long before the odd cavalcade ground to a halt once again, the route blocked by a huge semi-trailer carrying a mobile house to Weeper. It was bogged in the creek for hours and moved only after a lot of heavy labour. On the move again, the four-wheel drive escorts coped quite well with the deteriorating road, but the old cars had some unexpected problems. On rough bridges, for example, their narrow tyres tended to stick between the logs. But when the vintage vehicles hit the bulldust plains, they revelled in the appalling conditions, churning through at speed and creating spectacular effects.
good runs never lasted long enough. There always seemed to be yet another creek or river crossing. Creeks and rivers did have one advantage, though. They provided frequent opportunities for washing away thick layers of dust. More than half the river flow of all Queensland is concentrated in the Cape York Peninsula. In the wet season, all the streams become raging torrents, and the sandy plains are transformed into a morass known as the wet desert. The tiny township of Cohen starved of entertainment, was delighted to see the vintage cars next morning and gave the uncommon procession a cheer as it passed by the pub. Some of the travellers were soon wishing that they'd stayed in Cohen. The road north of the town was worse than anything so far encountered. the tiny convoy caught up with a road grader, which obligingly created a new section of road for the cars around a deep washout. It provided a smooth ride for only a few seconds on a horror stretch that was to soon claim another two of the old cars. Their drivers decided to give the top end of Cape York a miss. They turned west to Weeper, while the four remaining vintage cars plowed on towards the Cape. day's drive, the Wenlock River was reached. It was a beautiful sight after a long, hot, dusty drive, but was a horror to cross. The way over was wide and rocky, pitted with deep holes and flanked by steep, muddy banks. A frightening prospect to vintage car buffs who normally treat their vehicles like newborn babies. Each car had to be carefully guided past the bad spots and literally manhandled out of the river. It was, as the experts far south had said, definitely four-wheel drive country. The four-wheel drive vehicles with the party had plenty of work to do on the Wenlock. And what made it all the more heartbreaking was the knowledge that this road was the only way back. By the time the party reached the Jardine River, only 50 kilometers from the top of Cape York, everyone was exhausted. Five days of difficult driving followed by long nights making repairs, had drained even the most enthusiastic participants. The achievement of the goal was now close, but hardly anyone wanted to face that last 50 kilometers to the sea. After discussion, it was decided that only one car should do the last leg of the trip. Andre and Fran Dorr volunteered their 1928 Dodge. Fortunately, the Jardine River was at a low level, and the Dodge, escorted by the film car, set off with a full load of passengers. was a brief stop at the township of Bamaga, the local government administrative centre for all the country north of the Jardine River. Here the travellers took on extra fuel and provisions from the town's general store. Then came the run that made the epic journey seem worthwhile. There was a smell of salt in the air and soon the Dodge was rolling down to the sands of Cape York. On 
Andre and Fran Dor were eager for a celebration swim, but they were probably lucky to be spotted by nearby fishermen who showed them their latest catch. The swim was called off and the end of the journey was marked by a toast to the other vintage cars in the rally and to their crews. Cairns to Cape York in six days, a trip that's likely to become a legend among Australian vintage car owners.